Amos chapter 3, and uh, we're going to look at verse 3, Amos 3, 3, Amos chapter 3, verse 3. I received this word just when I was standing there worshiping the Lord, and I had just a supernatural download, just prophetically, because driving up, I was I was talking to the Lord. I went to sleep about 1.30 a.m., and I got up about 5, and uh, checked out, and by seven, because I had to pack. I, it's, I'm slow with packing. I have to pack. Praise God. So I had to pack and got out, got on the road, and and uh, and we're here. So it's wonderful. Bless God. So I'm gonna go have a bit of a rest after this. But on my way up, I was praying in the spirit, and I was just saying, Lord, just speak to me. I had nothing in my spirit at the time, just driving up, and and while we were worshiping here, the Lord just began to give me some downloads and and i think chris was asking me to come up i said keep singing for a bit and and i just jotted down a few things that the lord wants us to have this morning i just got excited when the, when the lord just released me because because I, I just released this word i i i just nearly took off running praise god you know that's how, that's just how my the, the gift of my life works. I can stand here where I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to say, and in the next two seconds, an hour, one hour message just comes, and 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 it comes with all the the power. And 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 I'm so what I'm sharing is something that the Lord has given me that that is for us this morning prophetic. I've not I have no notes. I just copied scriptures from my app. And we're going to go where the Lord wants us to go. Amen. Amen. So Amos 3.3, 3, this is the, uh, he gave me three passages and I wrote them down. And he said, I'll speak to the people through these three passages. The Bible says in verse 3, can two walk together unless they are agreed? Can two walk together unless they're in agreement? The Lord said to me, I want you to tell my people this morning that I want them to come into agreement with what I am saying and what I'm speaking to them. Come into agreement with the prophetic word. And what Molly, the prophetic word that Molly, Molly came up and released was such a, it was a, it was a now word. The spirit and the bride must say come together. There has to be the right word. There has to be the right word. The spirit and the bride have to come in sync and we have to speak together. Many times the reason why the prophetic words that God gives us don't come to pass is because we are out of sync with what God is actually saying. Now one thing you need to understand, and I just saw it in my spirit this morning, the Lord said to me, tell them that, that I'm not just speaking to the prophets. Prophets are not just individuals that I have singled out. He said the entire body of Christ by nature is supposed to be prophetic. You have to understand that the New Testament church is a prophetic church. Because the, Lord, the Bible says, God said, if there is a prophet among you, I will reveal myself to them through visions and dreams. If there is a prophet among you, I will reveal myself to them through visions and dreams. And in Acts chapter 2 says that in the last days I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Then he says, your sons and daughters will begin to prophesy. He says, your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. If there is a prophet among you, I will reveal myself to them through what? Visions and dreams. So you have to understand that the day the, the New Testament church was birthed, the entire church was birthed into the prophetic. Hallelujah. How many of you know God speaks to us through visions and dreams? He speaks to us through visions and dreams. And I felt like in 2023, God wants us to not just have good ideas. He wants us to have God ideas. Somebody say God ideas, God ideas, God ideas. We need to have God ideas. You see, we need to go from good ideas because good ideas are born from us. Hallelujah. They are born out of us. Prophet is prophesying right now. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Amen. He's teething at the moment, so he's a little bit cranky. Bless God. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Amen. So we have to understand that God is not calling us to birth things out of the flesh. He's not calling us to flow through good ideas. He wants us to lean into him for God ideas. The spirit and the bride has to say come. The spirit and the bride. Listen, not the spirit and the prophets. The spirit and the church. Because the church is prophetic. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. So God wants us to come into that place where we are leaning into him for prophetic words, for prophetic things that will come to pass. Let me say this. God will not pay for what he did not order. God will not pay for what he did not order. So we have to come before God, especially in the month of January. We need to come before God and say, God, what are you saying to me, to me, to me? Let me say this. You may not prophesy to other people, but you are a prophet for your own life. You are a prophet even unto yourself. God wants to talk to you about you. Amen. He wants to talk to you about who? About you. And he wants you to come into agreement with what he says. Because until we come into agreement, that word remains in the realm of the spirit. When the angel appeared before Mary, he said to Mary, Mary, you're full of grace. The Lord is with you. He said, you, he said, he said that the spirit of God is going to come upon you and you're going to be with child. And she said, be unto me according to your word. She came into agreement. With the prophetic word. And the moment she came into agreement with that prophetic word. There was a seed that was was released on the inside of her. She began to carry something that that God had birthed in her. that, That when she came into that time. Into that place of agreement. Let me just say this. There's things that God wants to release into your spirit. So that you can be able to bring them forth in 2023. But we have to say be unto me according to your word. How can two walk together unless they are in agreement? So God wants us to come into agreement with the word that is releasing even at this time. He wants us to ask him and to, pro- and to, and to press in until we receive a prophetic revelation of what he is saying to us. Listen to me. You may not have a word for me or for somebody else, but you need to have a word for yourself. Amen. Now listen to this. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? And then he says, with a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey. With a, will a young lion cry out of his den if he has caught nothing? Will a bird fall into a snare on the earth where there is no trap set for it? Will a snare spring up from the earth if it has caught nothing at all? If a trumpet is blown in a city, will not the people be afraid? In other words, all these things here are saying this one message. That every time God speaks, he wants us to respond to what he says. He wants us to respond to what he says. It says, it says here, it says, if a trumpet is blown in the city, will not the people be afraid? If there is, and it talks about a lion. It says, uh, it says, if he's caught nothing, uh, verse 5, it says, will a bird fall into a snare on the earth uh, where there is no trap? Will it? Uh, will a snare spring up from the earth if it has caught nothing at all? If a trumpet is blown in the city, will not the people be afraid? If there is calamity in the city, will not the Lord have done it? Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. He will do nothing until he, he, he's got to reveal it to you first before he does it. He reveals it before he does it. Now listen to this. He says, a lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? The spirit and the bride say come. The spirit and the bride say come. A lion has roared, who will not but fear? So God is saying, when I speak to you, I need you to respond. I need you to react to the prophetic word or to what I have spoken to you. What he releases into your life even at this time. God wants you to respond to it. 
Now, when you go before God in 2023, I want you to pray and ask God to give you three types of visions or three types of goals. I want you to ask him for, for what I would call spiritual goals for 2023. Ask him for spiritual goals. Say, God, what are you expecting from me in 2023? What goals are you giving me? What vision are you speaking to me about? What, Lord, Lord, what are you saying to me about these spiritual goals? Number two, ask God about physical goals. Ask about physical goals. Physically, physically. It's important that we understand that we have to look after this temple of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know what I'm talking about? So ask God about physical goals. Lord, what do I need to do? Some of you, God may tell you this year, I, I can, because God can see the end from the beginning. He may tell you, I want you to begin to put sugar away. Come on, somebody. Amen. It may not be easy, but it is necessary. It may not be easy, but it is what? Necessary. It is necessary. It is necessary. So it is important that we look after, we look after this, this horse that God has given us. We look after this body that God has given us. There's nothing worse than being able to have a voice and being able to have a mission and have a message, but your horse has died and you can't go anywhere. So God wants us to look after this resource that he has given us. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes we can be so religious and so super spiritual and think that every time God speaks, it only has to be about spiritual things. How many of you know God cares about your physical body as well? So ask him, so Lord, what do I need to do? Because Satan could have that beatings just around the corner waiting for you. And God can cause you to prophetically to avert some of that stuff by making the right decisions at this time. Be sensitive to what he says to you. Ask him about physical goals. Lord, what do you want me to do? He may say to you, I want you to walk so many kilometers every week from today. Start working. Because he can see maybe in 20 years time, you may have issues. And he wants to begin to prepare you, to build you, to get you to that place where you can begin to protect and to get yourself in a place where you need to be. It's important that we respond to God. He will speak to you spiritually. This year, try to read your Bible. Let that be your goal. Say, God, this year I want to go from Genesis to Revelation. I want to devote a time every day, one hour. Give me my daily bread. I want to receive from heaven. Make it a goal. Let me say this. Not just receive it, but write it down. Hallelujah. One of the reasons why the visions that God gives us doesn't come to pass is because whenever we receive it, we do not transpose it here in the natural. There is a reason why the Bible tells us that, that when you receive a vision, the Bible says that you should write it so that those who what, read it may what run with it. So you must publish the vision. You must produce the vision here. Why? Because you cannot hit a target you don't see. Some of you need to write that down. You cannot hit a target you don't see. If you go into a room that is pitch black and you're given a knife and there's a target somewhere, you can't hit it because you can't see it. You need to be able to see in order to hit the targets that you need to hit. So it's important for you to write it down because it's just like GPS. If you've got the GPS in front of you and this is my destination, I am going somewhere where I've not been before, that GPS will keep you on the road. Come on, somebody. It will keep you on the right track. Even if you know, uh, you know, I've just come back from Brisbane. I hate Brisbane. I don't like driving there. It is, there's bus lanes. I don't know where I'm going in. I have to follow people. Praise God. And sometimes it's like the blind following the blind. Amen. You can tell who, do, who, who come from Toomba when they're driving. They're driving into bus lanes. You know, going under and then there's headlights coming and they're reversing back. <laughs> I need a GPS. I need a GPS. And I can't have distractions. Amen. Somebody called me while I was using the GPS because there's, there's roads going this way, then up this way, then this way. And I, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I have to focus. And I had to hang up and I said, listen, I can, you can, don't call me now because I'm going to get lost. 
So don't allow distractions even at this time because you got to focus so that you can get to your destination. Somebody say focus. It's important to focus because your life will always move in the direction of your focus. I always say this every year. Your life will always move in the direction of your focus. Make sure in 2023 that your focus, you, your, your, your focus is sound, that you, that you put out every destruction that is around you. Distractions will waste your time. They will delay you. They will keep you from getting to your destination on time and getting you to a destination in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the right manner. It's important that we, we, we maintain our focus because your life will always move in the direction of your focus. That's why when you're driving, don't change the channel. Don't make, mark around. You'll end up in the paddock. Why? Because if your focus is not right, you're going to end up in the paddock. How many of you know what I'm talking about? If somebody is, is overtaking you, don't look at them because you're going to run into them. Because your life, your body always moves in the direction of your focus. And so this time, it's not about what others are doing. It's what God wants you to do. It's about what you, God has put in your hands to do. Don't be distracted by others. Come on, somebody. Amen. What may be a God idea for somebody else can be a good idea to you. Because it didn't come from God for yourself. So it is important that we run with God ideas. God ideas. God ideas. So God wants us to what? He wants us to respond to what he says to us. If you write the goal, you write the vision, and you don't do anything about it, it shall remain on the paper. It will remain in that place, and it will just be a resolution. This year, don't work with resolutions. Work with visions and dreams. What is your? What are you saying to me, Holy Ghost, for 2023? Write the vision down. Write the vision down. God wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to you and he wants you to come into agreement with him. When you come into agreement with him, you will see that this vision that God has released and has given to you, it will come to pass. He says, a lion has roared, who will not fear? So when God speaks, he wants us to react. He wants us to react. He wants us to respond. He wants us to react. I've shared this testimony before, but I remember when I was a kid. My dad took us to the zoo one time. It was only very little. And we were driving in and we parked in the, in the parking lot. And we were all coming out of the car, heading to the admissions gate to pay and then going to the zoo. And, you know, there was all these tour buses that were there also coming in. And the tourists were coming off of these buses to, to go and line up and pay and get into this zoo. And, you know, there was one of the first few enclosures there were fully grown male lions. And I don't know if they were fighting or what. But as we were walking towards the gate, towards that gate, there was a lion that let out the biggest roar I've ever heard. How many of you ever had a fully grown male lion roaring? That's it. You can hear them 25 k's away. It is as loud as a shotgun. Let me tell you, we didn't look around. We didn't care. We turned and ran instinctively. We turned and ran. A lion has roared. Who will not fear? We took off running. People are running for the car, running for the buses, trying to get through the window until the rangers had to run after us and say, listen, it's okay. He's in the enclosure. He can't hurt you. He's not going to kill you. Praise God. We were locking ourselves up in the car. Why? Because when the lion roars, we have to respond. There has got to be a reaction. Somebody has got to run. Come on, somebody. You've got to run with it. Tell your neighbor, run with it. Run with it. If you don't run with it, it's not going to come to pass. Let me tell you, every time God speaks to you, don't walk, run. I said, don't walk. I said, don't walk. I said, don't walk. Make haste. Make haste. And I'm going to show you in the scripture why we have to run. Habakkuk 2 verse 2. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. This is the second passage that the Lord gave me just this morning. He says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision down and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. 
that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie, though it tarries, wait for it, because it shall surely come and it will not tarry. It is important to understand that when God speaks to you, the worst thing you can do is walk. When he speaks, you have to run. When he gives you the vision, you have to run with the vision. Somebody say, run with the vision. Run with the vision. Amen. Let me finish with this. This is going to help somebody. We're going to have a good early one today so I can go and sleep. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We pray for Pat as she goes to Emmaus. She's going to a meeting. We bless her in Jesus' name. The Bible speaks to us, and this is going to help, help us understand this. The Bible tells us that God came to, there was a problem in the land. In 2 Kings, 1 Kings rather, chapter 18, verse 41. If you're writing notes, you can write that down. This, I have read and preached on this so many times, and I've never seen it like I've seen it this morning. This is what the Lord released it released uh, to me. And even last night I touched on it in the prophetic, uh, a different version of it in the prophetic meeting that, that I was at. There was a problem in the land. The Bible says that, that Elijah had spoken and he had said it shall not rain f- uh, until I say so. Praise God. And three and a half years the rain had stopped. He prayed and the heavens were shut and the rain was not coming down. And for three and a half years, the river had dried up. The ground was all cracked up and, and, and they, it was just desolation. It was in a terrible state. And some of us, this is how our year has been. It could be that this is how our finances looks like. It could be that some of our health, this is what it looks like. It looks like it needs divine intervention. So the land was in a terrible state. The ground was in a terrible state. And God wanted to bring a change where there was a change that was needed. I don't know if you're in any situation in your life where you're going through some kind of a famine. How many of you know you can go through a spiritual famine, a spiritual drought, where you feel like, God, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Some of us, we can go through that. It could be a financial famine. But let me tell you, whatever calamity you're going through, there is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. If you are prophetic and you are prophetic because you're part of the bride, let me say this. Your ears are open. Every time there's a challenge in your life, there will always be a word that God will release that will come to bring you out of the calamity that you're in. And so the Bible tells us that Elijah, who was in that place, three and a half years, not a rain, no cloud in the sky. I mean, it was a devastating place, devastating situation. All of a sudden, he begins to hear, he's hearing, and it sounds like torrential downpour. Rain is falling, rain is falling. He's hearing, you know, this is what God begins to do. When when your situation is all messed up, you begin to hear God speaking the opposite of what you're hearing or what you're seeing, rather. God will always give you a word that is contrary to your situation because he wants to change your situation. He begins to hear rain, 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 rain. I can hear the sound of rain. So he goes and he prophesies to the king. He tells the king, he says, king, guess what? I hear the sound of abundance of rain. He prophesies and he releases that word to the king. That's why the Bible says that you must publish that word. You must speak it. You must release it. You must write it down. You must, so that those who hear it can run with it. So what happens, the Bible tells us, when Ahab hears this word, immediately he responds to the prophetic word. He responds to the prophetic word. He jumps into his chariot and he gets his horses ready and he says to his horses, come on, let's go, get it up. And the horses start taking off to Jezreel. He's heading off to Jezreel. Now this is what the Lord said to me. He said to me that we have to learn to partner with him for us to see the prophetic word coming. 
And so this is what happened. The Bible says that when he released that prophetic word and he began to respond and act on that prophetic word, Elijah could have jumped into the, into the chariot with him and taken off with him. And if he had done that, that prophetic word would have remained in the realm of prophetic word. The Lord said to me, tell my prophets that just because you have heard it and you have spoken it doesn't mean it will come to pass. He said, whenever you prophesy and you release, yes, Holy Spirit, the Lord just said to me that not every, listen to this, not every intercessor stands in the office of a prophet, but every prophet has to be an intercessor. Every prophet, if you're prophetic, you must be an intercessor. You have to understand that if we release prophetic words and we don't cover them up with prayer, this is why some of what we release in January doesn't come to pass. It's because we have been ascended up to the hill and begin to prophesy and begin to pray and begin to pray. You must pray what you prophesy. Come on, somebody. You must pray what you prophesy. It makes sense because sometimes I remember I was preaching on the Gold Coast and this couple, an Indian couple came to me and they were crying. They said, Pastor, could you pray for us? We have been trying to have a baby for more than 10 years. We have not been able to have a baby. And so I, I began to pray. I began to pray. And in my ears, I began to hear the cries of a baby and I released a prophetic word. And I said, I can hear a baby crying. I said, this time next year, you are going to be with child. The moment I said that, they wiped their tears they started rejoicing they started praising God you know what they did like Ahab they jumped into the chariot and they took off if you as a prophet don't understand that after you have released that word you need to go and start to pray that word many times in the hotel room I have stayed up because I am praying for those that are prophesied over how many of you know sometimes you know in your spirit it is not said or even if you're accurate and you heard the sound of abundance of rain and you've released it. If you don't back it up with prayer, it remains in the realm of the spirit. That's why it's important to understand when we say January, we need to fast and do a fast in January. It's because what we are hearing, we are sealing it in prayer and intercession. Otherwise, it stays in the realm of the prophetic. It stays in the realm of the prophetic. The Lord said to me, the prophets must become prayer warriors. They must become prayer warriors. He said, you must partner with me. When I speak to you and I give you a prophetic word, he said, you must pray the word until it comes from that generation, rather from that dimension into this dimension. If I tell you that you're not going to die, you're going to live, you're going to be healed, you're going to prosper, I'm going to open doors. If you don't climb up the mountain and contend in the realm of the spirit, that word will remain in that dimension of prophecy. It will never come into manifestation. And sometimes we come and we say, you know what? You gave me a word. He hasn't come to pass. The question is, did you go up the mountain? Or did we just jump in the chariot and take off? You can listen to me. Oh, sata labrande kesete. Those... Because Elijah went up, yes, Holy Spirit, Elijah went up and he got into prayer and he prayed and he prayed until he saw the cloud like that of a man's hand. He, he pressed into God, he pressed in until what he had heard and what he had prophesied began to come from the supernatural into the natural. And the Bible says he tied his coat. And I've just heard the Holy Spirit say to me that those who run after prayer will overtake those who have, who have, who have, who have have run before prayer. Oh, shalabande kesete. You see, he, he ran after he prayed. Sometimes we receive prophetic words and we run before we pray. But we have to pray before we run. Oh, I'm going to write that down. That is good. I have never seen that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We get the word and we run with it. But the question is this, have you prayed? That is why we are not accelerated. That's why it's not going fast. That's why we're not getting to our destination. But if we pray before we run, you will find that those who pray before they run will overtake those who run before they pray. Ahab didn't pray. He got the word, jumped in, took off. 
The Bible says that Elijah tied his coat upon himself after he had prayed. And he came running. And he over got caught up with the chariot. And he overtook the chariot. And he got to Jezreel before that even this guy had gone to Jezreel. If you want to see acceleration with the prophetic words that God has given you in 2023, you've got to pray before you run. It doesn't have to wait till December. Some of us by August, you should have already have everything that God told you is going to happen. It should have already come to pass because there's an anointing for acceleration when it comes to the prophetic that is released when you pray before you run. Somebody say, I need to pray before I run. Don't be like Ahab. Ahab jumped in his chariot and he ran. He didn't bother praying, but he ran with it. Let me tell you, it will delay if you don't pray. That is why many times we get prophetic words and nothing comes to pass. So it delays and it is because we have not learned how to pray. We haven't learned how to pray. This morning we need to pray over the words that has been given to us. We need to come into that place and we say, God, we need to pray. We need to come into intercession. Whatever God has told you, before you take off with it, take it to the place of prayer. Hallelujah. 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 He received that word. The Bible says he ran and, 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 and as he was passing King Ahab, he must have said to King Ahab as he passed him by, some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. And he, psh, he just overtook him. Jezreel was the destination. That's where they were both heading. And so he got to the destination before the one who had run before he prayed. God wants us to begin to pray. Prophets, listen. It is important to pray before you run. That's why he said to the disciples, I know you can preach, I know you can give the word, but before you go out there and preach, tarry in Jerusalem. Tarry in Jerusalem. Before you run with the vision. I have told you going to all the nations and preaching the gospel. But before you do that, tarry ye in Jerusalem. Why? Because if you want to see acceleration, it has to start from the place of prayer. Glory be to God. Somebody say prayer, prayer. 2023, every word that God gives you, every prophetic word, every prophetic decree that it releases into your life, I want you to dedicate your life that I will pray, I will intercede, I will press into God until this word is manifested. It is settled. The Bible says forever your word is settled in heaven. It is settled there. You've got to go into the heavenlies. You've got to go into that place. I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound there. Whatever you lose here, it will be loose there. It has to be settled in the heavens. Forever your word is settled here. It is determined and it is settled in the realm of the spirit before it is settled here. Can we have the musicians up? I'm going to land this here. Praise God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It may take you, it may take you, what would have taken you six months can take you three months. Prayer is the shortcut that God wants to release into your life right now. Prayer and intercession. Do you know why it took Jesus three and a half years? Three and a half years. To accomplish everything. This man was so successful. Listen, I have been preaching for 30 years. And I feel like I haven't started yet. Jesus was done in three and a half years. And he left such an impact that time reset. B.C. and A.D. The calendar reset. This man left such an impact that 2,000 years later, we're still talking about somebody whose ministry only lasted three and a half years. Do you know why he had such acceleration? 
three and a half years, he has left impact that has, that has reverberated through time and eternity. It is because he started his ministry through fasting and praying. He was, the Bible says when he came out of the Jordan, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness and he fasted and he prayed for 40 days. He knew if I'm going to serve God and do what God wants me to do. I have a prophetic word. I have, a, I have an assignment, but it has to be from the place of prayer. He began it from the place of prayer. And after he returned in the power of the Spirit, the Bible says there went a fame of him round about Galilee. No Facebook to promote, no Instagram, no ads, no newspaper ads, no TV, no God TV. Everybody came from everywhere to hear this man. In no time, nobody, one day ago, two days, maybe a month ago, nobody knew who he was. But now everybody was going to him. He had such impact, such impact. Three and a half years. That's all it took him. Three and a half years. To say it is, to come to the place where he can say it is finished. Somebody say acceleration. 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 The Bible says that him, when you, that, that, that he that reads the, the vision should do what? He should what? Run. Run with it. He says run with it. Run with it. This is the problem with, 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 with King Ahab. He wasn't running with it. He was riding on a horse. The one who was literally running was the one who was in the place of prayer. Come on somebody. God wants us to learn how to run. But we can only run from the place of prayer. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall walk and shall not faint. They shall run and not be weary. Come on, somebody. That means you're not going to abandon the project in February. Most of our resolutions are done by February, March. We don't even remember what they were. <laughs> True or false? Come on. You put the waist scale under the bed. <laughs> Amen. But God wants us to run. He wants us to run. Let me say this. He wants us to run. He wants us to get to that place where we get it and we begin to run with it. He wants us to run. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. There's not going to be weariness until December. They'll say, can't you take up? No, no. There's going to be a supernatural grace that will come upon you. That you will outrun the king's horses. You will outrun the king's chariots. That means you're going you're gonna to break records in 2023. They're saying there is no mathematical equation that makes sense why you should be in this situation. How is that possible? Let me tell you, when you run with it, you break records. How does five loaves, two fish feed the 5,000 and 12 basket full left over? When you run, God knows how to break records. There's increase. There's multiplication. There's acceleration. God releases it. Let's stand up on our feet. Shaba babo rabasate. God wants us to run. He wants us to run. I kept hearing on your mark. Get set. 2023. Don't walk. Don't walk. Don't ride on a horse. Don't get in a chariot. God wants you to run, 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 run. Run with the vision. Run with it. Run with it. And it's not going to be by mind. It's not going to be by power. It's going to be by the Spirit of the Lord. In the natural, it could not have been possible for him to do what he did. He could have gotten worn out, tired. But how can two walk together unless they're in agreement? When you come to that place of prayer, you come in agreement with the Holy Ghost. And He will come upon you. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. We're not going to look at our own effort. But we will trust in the name of the Lord. We will partner with Him. And when we partner with Him, we will be able to run with endurance. The race that is set before us. 
God is not a God of abandoned projects. He who began a good work in you will be faithful. He will be faithful. He will be faithful to accomplish it, to finish it, to bring it to completion. Be like God. This year, I decree and declare every goal, you will finish it. If you begin it, you will have the grace to finish. Begin to pray. 30 seconds right now. Begin to pray. Say, Lord, right now I am partnering with you. I am partnering with you. Speak to me about 2023. 20, get a journal when you get home and say, God, speak to me. This week, he will begin to give you financial goals. He's going to begin to give you all kinds of targets and goals that he wants you to have in 2023. How much do you want to make this year? What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? This year, I want to go here, here, here. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Release it out into the open. Write it down and you will find when you publish it you release it you will be able to run with it you'll be able to run you'll be able to run father god i thank you for the anointing that we will hit the targets we can see when we can see if you can see it the bible says god spoke to abraham say to him look to the north south east west as far as your eyes can see i shall give it to you for your inheritance if you can write it and see it god says i will give it to you I will give it to you. Say, God, I want to be out of debt this year by this date. I want to be out of debt. I want to have a job by this time. I'm giving you this debt. I'm writing it down. Because by faith, I am going to begin to contend to see this come to pass. I want to see my family saved by this time. God, I'm writing it down. I'm putting my vision down. I'm writing it down. And I'm believing God that it will come to pass in Jesus name. Right now, just ask the Lord, speak to me, Lord, speak to me, speak to me, speak to me, speak to me. If you fail to plan, you've already planned to fail. Make sure that you plan. Make sure God will release. He will release your great that grace right now to partner with him for him to release that supernatural plan that he wants to give you. Father, we will not fail to plan. We thank you, Father, for the anointing. The anointing for intercession and prayer. The anointing for intercession and prayer. The anointing for intercession and prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers this morning. Thank you, Father God, that this week we are going to embark on fasting and praying. I said if you are able to do a 12-day fast, do a 12-day fast, do a 12-day fast, one day for every month of this year. And seal it before the Lord and say, God, this year is my year for my breakthrough. I will see breakthrough in 2023. Breakthrough in 2023. The failures of 2022 will not be my will not be my portion in 2023. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your grace right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. Let the Spirit of God come over your people right now. Like it came upon Elijah. Let your spirit come upon them. Let mantles be released right now. In the name of Jesus. Now before I make an altar call. We're going to close with an altar call. And those who need to go can go at that time. But this Tuesday. If you would like to serve in some capacity. We've got a. We've got a big crusade coming up in February. We're going to have a tent up here in Toomba in Queens Park for two weeks. And we're going to, uh, Peter and Lee Taberna, Tent of Hope, they're going to be coming up. If you would like to volunteer and just get out in the street or help in the tent and do ministry, if you would like to do that, 
with this Tuesday, 7 p.m., we're going to meet at 8 Hume Street, and uh, and, and we're going to talk about what God wants to do. There's, there's a conference also coming up first week of February. We're having people, a team from Iris Ministries, Heidi Bacon, are going to be with us from that Wednesday, the first week of February, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then we're going to have a week off, and then two weeks of that crusade. So it's going to be awesome in February. Hallelujah. We're going to hit the ground running. So if you would like to serve, you're saying, I just want to serve. I want to do something. And I just want to know what, where I can plug. Whatever you want to do, just come to the meeting. Share with me what you would like to do. If you want to be on in the protocol team and you want to serve in different capacity in the music, in the worship, all hands on deck. We need you to come on board so we can be able to do the work of God. February is going to be a, a month of souls. We're going to see souls coming into the kingdom of God in Jesus mighty name hallelujah bless the Lord father I just thank you for those who are here this morning and I just speak right now let the blessing of the Lord be upon them starring us prayer and intercession for we have heard from the Spirit of God this morning that those who pray and run will overtake those who run before they have prayed and those who ride rather before they have prayed we thank you, Father God, for your presence. Quicken in us the spirit of intercession, the spirit of prayer. Now speak the blessing of the Lord over your people, that you will watch over them this morning and this week. I thank you, Father God, for the anointing and the grace of God that is sufficient. The Lord, you're releasing the grace, the grace over your people. Bless the works of their hands. I cover their vehicles with the blood of Jesus. I cover their vehicles with the blood of Jesus. I cover their transportation, their homes with the blood of Jesus. I decree and declare over this congregation, now no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No kingdom raised against you shall be able to stand. We thank you, Lord, for protection, for a hedge of protection around them, around their family, and over everything that they own. I thank you, Father, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. Somebody shout, Amen. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Go with the love of the Lord. We got tea and coffee at the back. If you need ministry.